After stopping at Lockport and being relieved of that tug, she was picked up by other tugs and passed through Chicago like a rock star. Escorted by the Coast Guard and three freshwater tugs who pulled her from Chicago down to the American Shipbuilding Company. There her cabins were fully stacked. Republic Steel, the new owners of the Gridler, saw her as their new flagship. She would be adorned with their light gray painted cabins, bright white trim, black hulls with a single white racing stripe. Of course, there would also be their bright red smokestacks that they were well known for, and the company logo on their bow. Before her maiden voyage, an open house was held aboard the Gridler. Employees, local politicians, and boat nerds alike all crowded aboard this smart-looking new lake boat. And on October 21st, she went into service for Republic Steel. By spring of 1952, Republic would have a fleet of three C-4 iron ore carriers. Next to inner service was the C-4, formerly known as Mount Mansfield. She was christened Charles M. White on September 20th, 1951, but would be completed too late to sail that season. She was followed by the former Scott E. Land. After conversion, she became the Troy H. Browning on October 11th, 1951. She too arrived on the lakes too late that season and would not run until the spring of 1952. The Browning would later be renamed Thomas F. Patton in 1955. With their huge red stacks, these were the fastest ore vessels on the Great Lakes. Because of that, they gained the nickname Tomato Stackers from the slower Lakers that they often passed. Also being converted in 1952 were two C4SB2 vessels. The first was Marine Robin, which was converted into the Joseph H. Thompson, named in honor of the president of the Hannah Steamship Line. She was a unique vessel because, once fully assembled, she became the largest C4 ever on the lakes. Her overall length was 714 feet, and she boasted as being the longest vessel on the lakes when christened on Monday, October 28, 1952. Now, she was not the largest vessel to make the trip up the Mississippi River because she came up in three pieces. Her christening was performed by Mrs. Philip R. Newhaus, the daughter of the vessel's namesake. Although slated to make her maiden voyage to Escanaba in the first week of November, the voyage was completely ignored by the news media on the lakes. They were far too busy covering the national election, which happened at the same time. She was later listed as passing down at Port Huron at 7.30 in the morning on Thursday, November 6th. So we can probably say that she reached Escanaba on the 4th. Later, however, when she passed upbound through the Sioux on the following Sunday, she was treated like a superstar. The fifth and final converted C4 to come to the lakes was the Marine Angel. With a length of 634 feet, she was the longest of her class to squeeze along the Mississippi and Illinois waterways. In fact, she passed through the Van Buren Street Bridge in Chicago with just seven inches to spare on each side, yet made it without a scratch. Unlike the Gridler class C4s, the Marine Angel had served as a hospital ship during the war. She had been equipped with 100 beds and attended to wounded in the area of Bombay, India. 
After clearing onto Lake Michigan on March 5, 1953, the vessel was towed directly to the American Shipbuilding Company. The yet-to-be-completed lake boat was under the management of Amersand Company and Mr. Max McKee. The name Marine Angel was removed and she was renamed McKee Sons before being towed to Manitowoc, Wisconsin where her self-unloading equipment would be installed. She would become the only powered self-unloader in the C4 class. That process would take until late October and before she could undergo sea trials the McKee Sons would hit a snag. When Mr. M. C. Wilcox, the United States Customs Inspector, came from his office to do the standard inspection of the vessel, he saw the name painted on her reading McKee Sons. But his official paperwork had listed her as Marine Angel. Thus, he could not release the vessel. Furthermore, Coast Guard regulations required that the name of a vessel once changed must be published in the New York papers for one month before it becomes legal. What could be done? Well, the shipyard painters hustled and painted out the name McKee Sons everywhere it appeared. And then they stenciled in Marine Angel. The inspector was satisfied, cleared his paperwork, and went away. Sometime thereafter, the reverse took place and the Marine Angel was painted out, and again, McKee Sons was painted in. Thus, she was renamed three times in the year 1953. On Sunday morning, October 25, 1953, McKee Sons sailed onto Lake Michigan for her first sea trials. The next day, she went out again on a second sea trial. Both were under the command of Captain Harold Hansen. Giving three long and two short whistle blasts, the good captain took her out onto Lake Michigan on Tuesday night, October 27th, for her first load. Her destination was Calcite, Michigan, to pick up limestone for East Chicago, Indiana, and the Inland Steel Plant. For most of the next three decades, the C-4 bulk carriers worked well on the Great Lakes. Over time, the Gridler class evolved through two fleets, from Republic Steel and later into Cleveland Cliffs. But they always looked great. Over the years, the Thompson and the McKee Sons remained in their original owner's colors throughout their powered careers. Then in 1980, the steel industry collapsed, and all at once, Lakers were laid up, and any vessel that showed inefficiency in any way was headed for the scrapyard. All of the C-4 vessels, with their fuel-guzzling engines, were among the first to go. All three of the Gridler classes didn't fit out in the spring of 1980 and were towed overseas for scrapping in the fall of that same year. The Joseph H. Thompson also didn't fit out in 1980 or 1981. However, she did sail a few trips in the summer of 1982. Thereafter, she was laid up until 1985 when Upper Lakes Towing Company of Escanaba purchased her for conversion to a barge. That conversion was not completed until 1991. Still sporting the name Joseph H. Thompson, the barge was now a self-unloader and was pushed by a tug appropriately named Joseph H. Thompson Jr. This was largely because some of the steel used to make the tug came from the C-4's scrapped stern. Finally, in 2023, the barge Joseph H. Thompson went to scrap at Port Colborne, Ontario. That left only the McKee Sons as the last C-4 afloat on the Great Lakes. 
In that same dark year of 1980, the McKee Sons was also laid up. Much like the Thompson, the McKee Sons had her troublesome engine removed and a notch cut into her hull in 1991. She was in service until 2012, when it was decided that repairs needed aboard the barge were too costly. Thus, Grand River Navigation's charter was terminated in late 2014. Her tug, Invincible, pushed the McKee Sons to Muskegon, Michigan, where the barge was laid up on December 20, 2014. As of March 2024, in the making of this video, that is where she remains, as the last floating C4 on the Great Lakes. By the way, do not try and visit her or ask to go aboard. She is private property and is well protected. They do not like boat nerds snooping around. From my point of view, however, she's probably the best painted hull of any in her most recent fleet.